Greetings and welcome to a new video. In this video we start with a new series about rectifier circuits and this is our first example where we have the half wave rectifier. We start with a really simple load which is a resistive load and we will see step by step the calculations how we can determine several parameters in this circuit. Of course we will also verify this using MATLAB Simulink simulations. So let's look at our circuit. We have this source which is our AC source which is given by this expression. 20 sine 100 pi t volts and we have a diode here considered as ideal and we have a resistor here pure resistor of 50 ohm we would like to calculate several uh, parameters here average load voltage average load current and also the rms load voltage and also the rms load current and we also like to know what the observed load power is and also the power factor in this circuit so let's see how we can do that, but before we move into the calculations in detail, let's see how the waveform is uh, depicted. So the Vm here, which is shown here, is actually the peak value of our expression for the source, which is 20. So it is a pure sine wave. In this case, you can see that the x, the horizontal axis, is given in omega t, not in t. So this is the full period, 2 pi, which is in this case, can be calculated by using this omega. And this peak value and this uh, minus the peak value is also given here for the other parts because we have here the VO. VO is our output voltage. In this case, since this is a half wave rectifier, it only passes through the first wave and then blocks the second part of the uh, period. And for the diode voltage, you can see that this the first part is uh, zero because when the diode is on, it is a short, so the voltage across it is zero. When the diode is not on, so it is a reversed bias, then we have the negative of the Vs, which is then the second part of the uh, first, uh, second part of the period. Okay, this is just about the waveforms for the Vs, Vd, and the Vo. Now let's now look at the calculations. We can as said, express the Vs in terms of the parameter omega t instead of t, and that is given here. And now here we have the Vm, and in general the omega, which is here 100 pi radians per second. Okay, first one is the average load voltage. Average load voltage is expressed in this format. You can see that is 1 over the complete period, but we integrate from 0 to pi. Why? Because the signal is effectively pres present from 0 to pi so we can say we did the integration lower than the upper limit and then since the uh, vo is our uh, signal we need to integrate that's actually also given in the integral but the vo here in the conducting part is also equal to vs so that can be also expressed like so and vs is given by this expression which is then like so and we know what Vm is and we know what omega is, so we can also do that. But now in general form, we can now integrate that by taking the Vm out. And this is the part where we have integrated the sine of omega t and then limit lower than the upper limit. And when you now calculate that, now you have a general expression for the average load voltage for a whole phase rectifier. So it is the peak value of your source voltage divided by the pi. Now, the peak value in this case is 20, so we get now 20 over pi, which is approximately 6.37 volts. The average load current is now very simple because you just use Ohm's law, so volt over the resistor. We know Vm over pi was our uh, expression, which is 20 over pi over 50 because that's the resistor. So we get here again approximately 127.3 milliamps. Our MS load voltage is also in a similar form calculated, but then using the definition for RMS, root mean square, that's shown here. Again, from 0 to pi, that is because the signal is there present. And again, the same reasoning that the VO is equal to Vs when the signal, the diode is conducting. And then we take the square of the input signal. That's actually shown here. Now, when you now integrate this, this is the result. We get now Vm over 2. Vm is 20, so we can actually get now here 10 volts exactly. RMS load current is now also pretty straightforward calculated using Ohm's law in this circuit. Now we can do IO RMS, so the load current RMS is equal to load voltage RMS divided by the resistor, and you get here now 200 milliamps. Absorbed power can be calculated in uh, in two ways. You can take the 
VORMS squared over R or IORMS squared times R. So the result will be the same in this case, 10 squared over 50 will be 2 watts exactly. The final one is the power factor that is defined as the ratio between the absorbed power over the apparent power if the frequency is uh, in this case just one single frequency. Now we need to look also at the apparent power which is then the source voltage RMS times the source current RMS. Now source voltage and the source current can be calculated like so because the source current RMS is also equal to the source uh, load current RMS because that, those are in series so this is then 200 milliamps. And the source voltage RMS is because this is a pure sine wave you just take the amplitude divided by the square root of 2 that is the result of integration again in this formula and then you get now here 20 over the square root of 2 will be then 14.14 volts. Now we have now the necessary information to calculate this apparent power S, which is then given by 2.828 volt amperes. Now substitute that in here, we have now 2 over 2.828 and that will give us 0.707 as our power factor. Let's now collect the values we have calculated and now look at the simulation we have done. This is the AC voltage source Vs and this is now diode which is considered to be an ideal, close to ideal in the Simulink and we have also our resistor of 50 ohm. Here, here we measure the uh, current here, we measure here the volt at this node and we also measure the, uh, the voltage at this node and that all three go to the scope so we will sh shortly also see the waveforms and you also take here the mean value of the load current and also the RMS value. You can see the values here. And also from the load voltage, we take the mean and also the RMS value. Now let's go one by one. The first one is the average load voltage. We calculated 6.37, so that's close to what we have, so it's pretty fine. We also have your average load current, which is 0.1273 amps, so this is exactly as we have calculated. We also have is the RMS load voltage, which is 10 volts, also correct. And we also have here 0.2 amps, which is 200 milliamps for our RMS load current. So everything is correct. So verify with this simulation. So let's now look at the simulation result in a waveform. The, the red one is our input, the source voltage. The green one is our output voltage. And you also see the yellow one, which is our load current waveform. Now what you see here is that the signal indeed, the pure sine wave is indeed uh, passed through in the first part of the period and the second part of the period is blocked. And the load current is also exact same format. Next example we will discuss the half wave rectifier we are using an RL load. So stay tuned and see you next time in another video.